I'm just going to, sorry, when this camera steadies, I'm just going to uh, quarter the cranks on this one axle. It's the axle, it's the leading axle of the uh, 14 mil gauge, 7 mil scale to two. Uh, outside crank, obviously. Now, I've already uh, fitted one crank. And with this technique, you fit the cranks on one side uh, of any axles being done, because, of course, it's always the second axle that's critical. Now, uh, I've already fitted uh, a washer and the bearing. So all I have to do is fit the crank. This is a printed crank. Now, it's been bored uh, for the axle and bored for the crank pin using the printed um, collets uh, that I've shown on uh, a couple of uh, web threads. Now, you'll note I'm putting some epoxy resin. This is Devcon. I'm, I'm putting the resin into the crank not onto the axle because uh, if you put it onto the axle it'll push straight into the bearing and if it pushes anywhere as it will I want it to push out not into the bearing to cause problems. Um, I've also put some uh, grease into the bearing uh, to try and prevent the uh, if any glue does get in there to try and prevent it from uh, causing causing problems otherwise I'll have to take the thing back off so this has been accurately bored out so it's going to go on square it'll just push on neatly and I'm going to push it on and the right hand crank leads conventionally and I'm going to quarter it approximately by eye and what is important is that and I'm just showing it on as a uh, square so uh, I don't distort anything and very, very carefully to the right depth, wiping off excess glue as I go just for convenience sake and also so I can see how far it's going on now I think says he trying to feel what's going on I'm wearing my wrong glasses so I can sort of see the video and see the work piece uh, and it's kind of not helping we're in the wrong glasses, but there we go. I think that's the right depth. I want it flush with the end of the axle. I think that's about right. So that's, uh, in fact, ends up nowhere near quartered. Uh, it should be somewhere around there. Right, okay, so that's just approximately quartered. Now, uh, uh, this plate is for that side and that sleeves neatly over that um, crank and you can see or I can see from the angle I am that that is nowhere near right so I'm just going to slip that on there like that and whoops if I so these plates are over both axles like that. This is the very, very first time I've tried this. I've never um, used these in, ang in anger before. So, um, whoops, Daisy, that slips out. Uh, the principle is if these, that's looking good so far, if these plates, are both 
on the surface, the work surface, if you see what I mean, then like that, and they're both holding the cranks like that, then because these were laser cut to 90 degrees and the laser cut is accurate, then uh, these cranks are going to be set at 90 degrees. Now, what I'm showing here is uh, setting crank of an individual axle. Uh, actually, I lasered these 21 mil apart, which is scale three feet, which is the wheelbase of the tattoos. So I could do both axles in situ on the loco if I was so inclined. Um, or I could uh, double check to do uh, two axles at once, or I could laser for an 060 with three axle holes, etc., etc., and do them all either off the loco as a set or on the loco um, uh, with uh, you know everything in situ. So you can use these any which way you want. Um, I, I lasered these also uh, to be the exact flange height of the deck. Uh, it's not critical if you're using it like this. It doesn't matter if these ends are, are up in the air as long, you know, bec um, because the, axle, the pretend axle height is going to be the same as long as they're identical here. Uh, because they'll be sat at exactly the same angle and give you the same results. So as long as these plates are identical, almost, almost, says he advisedly, whatever you do, the uh, however you use them, uh, the quartering is going to come accurate. Uh, so it's a very, very versatile uh, technique uh, as long as the uh, the profiles of the cranks are cut uh, accurately and accurate relative to each other bang on zero degrees as it were and bang on 90 degrees so that is how to use this technique i won't disturb it at the moment because the epoxy is hard <coughs> but that gives me an absolute 90 degrees um probably more accurate than i can measure it and of course if i use uh, even if it were 88 degrees or something which it isn't it'll be 90 degrees but even if it were a little bit off if I use the same jig uh, and do all wheel sets in the same jig in the same way, uh, your quartering is likely to function or will function uh, correctly. But as I say, I have confidence that my machine produces uh, the angles uh, accurately. So I'm getting a good 90 degrees on this. And because... The profile is a cosy fit on the cranks. Uh, we then uh, translate that accurately to the cranks on the axles. So uh, a really nice, reliable and frankly very easy way of uh, quartering uh, cranks on or quartering outside cranks on wheel sets should work with uh, any gauge uh, you know you can you can do what you want with it this is it in its very very simplest form uh, one can make it much more sophisticated if one so wishes or keep it simple it is a principle and one can enhance it one can include it in uh, a spare bit of etch on an etch brass kit 
uh, you can make a very nice sophisticated module uh, uh, for for general use and adapt it for this that and the other um, it's a principle that you can work with to your heart's content um, and I'm sure uh, one can find uh, a pretty I'm sure there's a solution for um, uh, uh, quartering normal wheel sets in a not too dissimilar vein if one works through it um, I trust this will be of interest to people. Um, cheers, thank you for watching.